Babies are precious, and taking care of them starts early. Moms-to-be know how important knowledge is for their baby's health, right down to their DNA. I'm Andrew Chapman, and today we're discovering how DNA can share a wealth of knowledge right here in the lab. I'm in the lab now with Connie. Connie, what is your position here in the lab? I'm the senior lab manager of Life Labs Genetics. Excellent. And what happens in this lab? Well, we're standing right now in the sample prep room of our large facility here. Um, this is where we receive patient samples um, and we process them to get down to their genetic material, right down to their DNA. Wow, the nitty gritty. The nitty gritty. Yep. And how many tests do you do in this lab? We process about 1,300 samples a month. Um, so this year we'll, we're on track for about 16,000 samples. Fantastic. Well, thanks a lot, Connie. You're welcome. I'm here in the lab with Allison. Allison, what's your title here in the lab? I am medical laboratory technologist here at the lab. I like it. Very cool. Now, what kind of tests are done in this lab? We do panorama and IPT here. Okay, what does that mean? That means that it is a prenatal screen, and it's non-invasive. Okay, that's important. So basically, uh, mothers get this test done, right? Is that who gets this test done? Yes. Any woman who is pregnant and is nine weeks along in their pregnancy can get this test done. Or any pregnant woman who wants insight on the health of their fetus or insight for pregnancy management. Amazing. Well, thanks a lot, Allison. Thanks. I'm in the lab with Kim. Kim, what is your position here in the lab? I am the Technical Quality Specialist for Genetics and Molecular Diagnostics. Amazing. Now, could you sort of tell us what your colleague Allison was doing? Absolutely. So the first step in the processing of the samples is to separate the blood into its various components. We have red blood cells, white blood cells, and plasma. The red blood cells actually contain no DNA, so they're of no use to us. The white blood cells only contain mom's DNA, so we don't want that either. But the plasma has a mixture of both mom and baby's DNA, known as cell-free DNA, and that's what we're most importantly looking at. So we'll centrifuge the samples, divide it into those various components, and then take off that plasma for testing. And then what's the next stage next in that step process? Next is that we're going to be adding various buffers and enzymes to remove that cell-free DNA from the plasma. We'll then add that to a vacuum manifold and use the vacuum force to pull the DNA through a column and it then binds to a filter. When that uh, vacuum is done, we'll use ethanol to release it from the filter and then the DNA is ready for us to do testing with. After the DNA is extracted, it is mixed with a series of enzymes and primers specific to the chromosomes of interest. Those chromosomes would be 13, 18, 21, X, and Y. These reagents are mixed together and then placed in a thermal cycler to allow the, the amplification of DNA. Multiple copies of these particular fragments of DNA are required for the analysis. All right, Connie, what part of the lab are we in now? We are in the post-PCR room. This okay. is where we've taken DNA, we've amplified it, and now we're actually looking at it. Correct, but why am I wearing this jacket? This is to distinguish the dirty space from the rest of the lab. Oh, okay. You don't want to cross-contaminate exactly. and ruin the tests. Exactly. Well, we've got the information from the tests. Now we put them in this giant printer-looking machine? <laughs> this is our sequencing analyzer. It's, um, it looks like a pretty cool instrument, but this is where the magic happens. Our DNA is loaded into here. We've got our mom and our baby. Gets loaded onto here, and the DNA is read at 13,600 different targeted regions on the DNA. So what's the value of all this information for the patient? Well, for the vast majority of our patients that are low risk, this is information that they take and continue on with their pregnancy without further diagnostic testing. Uh, for the small proportion that are high risk, the doctor will take this information and help the patient um, with further into their diagnostic testing and with the management of their pregnancy. Wow, there's a lot of steps, but this certainly is a pretty important piece of the puzzle, isn't it? It sure is. Well, thanks a lot, Connie. You're welcome. And thanks, Life Labs, for letting us come visit. Now, if you want to see more videos like this and learn more of what happens in the lab, please visit medlabprofessionals.ca.